Hi, this is example number three of section 14.4. So as you can see in the PowerPoint, we can read uh, that we have a 50 uh, kilogram block and it's hoisted by a pulley system and a motor right there. And at this instant, the point P of the cable right here uh, has a velocity of 12 meters per second and an acceleration or rate of change of velocity of 6 meters per second. And we are asked to find the power supplied by the motor at this point. So what is the step that we want to follow? So the solution. The first thing that we have to do always that we have a pulley system is to relate our uh, velocity. So we have the velocity of P and we want to find the velocity of A because that motor is going to be pulling that, uh, that uh, 50 kilograms uh, box, right, or weight. So we need to find the velocity of A and you will see that we also need the accelerations because forces are related to accelerations. So in order to find that, let's name, we will name this distance. So we always have to put a datum, a reference frame. So let's put our reference frame right here, datum. And we will name this distance from that reference frame or datum as A, and we will name this distance as P. And as you see, we have only one cable, so that will be uh, only one length of that cable, and we can write that as A, 2 as A, 2 as A plus as P equals my total length of uh, the cable. So that's actually my step number one, which is relations between velocities. Okay, so once I have that, I can derive both sides of the equation, and if I derive the both sides of the equations respect to time, I get that this is a constant, so I get the velocities. 2VA plus VP is equal to 0, so I get that 2VA is equal to minus VP. So this is my first relation, so from here I can say if I have a velocity of P equals 12 meters per second, then it will be 6 meters per second. Right? And if I have a, an acceleration of P equals a 6 meters per second square, I will have an a, a acceleration because I can also derive this equation and I get the relations. Let me write that there here. 2A A is equals minus A P. So that's my second relation of velocities. So between velocities and accelerations. So if I have an acceleration of P going downwards, so let's make sure that we also take into consideration a, the velocity of A is going upwards. And the acceleration, if this is 6, P, this will be negative 3 meters over second, square is going upwards as well. So that was my first step. I always have to find the relation between the points in a pulley system. My second step, if I want to find the power supply, I know that the power is forces times velocity, so I already have the velocity. I have to find the force. So I have to actually find the force of this cable. I will do the free body diagram of the weight, A, right? And if I do the free body diagram of the weight, A, what do I have? I have the weight, which is 50 kilograms times the gravity, 9.8. 1, 8, and I have the tension. So if I, if I do the free body diagram of that pulley with do, with, which doesn't have a mass, I say that I have two tensions and that tension that goes downwards, right, that is uh, holding the weight A. So I, I can say that this tension that is holding weight A is equal to two tensions of the cord. So I'm going to write that here, right here, two tensions of the cord. And, of course, this free body diagram is equals to my kinetic diagram, and I already said that my block A 
is moving upwards, right? Mass times that acceleration in Y. So from here, if I make those two uh, diagrams equal, I can say that the, applying my equations of motion, I can say, right, that forces in Y will be equals to mass acceleration in Y. So I have that 2T minus 50 times 9.81 is equals 50 acceleration in A that I already said. Um, it's very important that that negative relates to that is opposite to my P. So it's very important that even though uh, I wrote a negative here, if I put my diagram right here, I should say that P is actually negative and this is positive. So this arrow is very important to, to know where my, my acceleration goes. So this negative is opposite to P. Okay, so I have my acceleration, so I'm going to write that as a positive. So from here, I can solve for T, solve for the tension, which is, and I have it right here, 320.3 newtons. So that's my tension. So that's the second step. The third step is to find the power output. So that will be, as you know, the definition of power. Power is force times velocity. Usually this is a vector formula, so, but in this case our tension and our velocity are in the same direction, so we can actually write only that tension and that velocity. Which velocity? So we want to calculate the power of the motor, so it's the velocity not from A, but from that, uh, mo how much is this motor pulling that uh, cable. So we will use this velocity. So it will be times 12 meters per second, and this is Newtons, right? So we will have 323 Newtons times 12 meters per second. So, and that gives us a result that the power outlet is equals to 3,844 watts. So that's the power that the motor has to give to do the work of pulling down up that weight. However, that's not the power that we have to give to the motor in order to work because we have an efficiency. So it's very important that the fourth step of this problem is to calculate the power N. So we, let's name that power out and power N will be that power out divided by the efficiency. So and obviously will give us a bigger value because there is some energy that is lost in the work that the motor is doing. So it's 3,844 divided by the efficiency of the motor which is given, which is 0 0.8. So finally, we have the power in of the motor is equals to 4,800 zero four watts. And that's the result that we were asked to find.